as you can see today I'm cleaning this lid with isopropyl alcohol IPA and uh, you may be wondering why I'm doing that uh, but this is a actually the lid of a Philips uh, analog 100 megahertz oscilloscope that I uh, recently won on eBay and uh, I'm going to show you the repair in a little bit uh, and then you'll know why I'm cleaning the lid here so here's the oscilloscope that I bought on eBay for 50 euros this is a Philips PM3266 and it's a 100 megahertz uh, dual trace oscilloscope it is of course analog uh, but it has an analog storage mode where you can store a trace and uh, play it back later which uh, might be useful it's also a little bit uh, special in the sense that it has two time bases one for each trace so you can show uh, two different uh, signals with two vastly different frequencies at the same time you might for example in a FM transmitter show both the output signal uh, to the antenna on one channel and the modulation signal on another channel so even though one is maybe running at 100 megahertz uh, the other signal uh, may be shown at uh, maybe 20 kilohertz or 10 kilohertz uh, bandwidth or something like that feature wise it's a cracking oscilloscope uh, it's obviously a two channel scope and each channel has its own controls so channel A has uh, its own position and amplification uh, and uh, AC, DC uh, channel B is the same, it has its own position and uh, volts per division selector and uh, AC, DC uh, connection and then specifically for this Philips scope um, each channel has its own uh, times per division control on top of that you can have delayed time base which basically means you can zoom in on any uh, signal as I said I bought this on eBay for 50 euros in the ad it said that the oscilloscope was uh, sold as uh, not working and also that there were two dots on the display but they were not moving based on that I, I could deduce that the high voltage circuit is working and I could deduce that the vertical uh, amplifiers here are also working so the only thing not working would be the deflection I went online uh, to look for the service uh, manual for this oscilloscope and luckily it was available so looking through the service manual I could see that everything was uh, transistor based and uh, I had confidence I could fix this as long as the high voltage uh, circuit and the power supply is okay uh, I wouldn't have a problem so uh, it looked like it would be a simple repair and um, if we take a look inside uh, I'll show you how easy it actually was okay now uh, we're looking directly inside the oscilloscope there's obviously the CRT up here and um, we have a lot of different uh, PCBs uh, and each of them have their own functionality so um, fixing things here would be reasonably straightforward uh, the only thing of course is that the circuit is massive uh, and testing and probing each individual PCB would be a real pain if we flip it over and we see the underside it's also covered by uh, PCBs so as you can see uh, every transistor on this scope has its own little socket all I had to do to get this thing working was to just uh, wiggle every little transistor pushing it into the socket again and that was it really and now I have a working 100 megahertz analog oscilloscope the other thing that was wrong with this oscilloscope and the reason that I was uh, washing the cover downstairs in the kitchen sink was that it was really really sticky on the top cover I'm not sure what this oscilloscope has been used for earlier before I got it but it was really really gooey but anyway uh, I got that cleaned up and the oscilloscope is now working so happy days so uh, let's just switch it on and see what it can do and then I'll just connect my signal generator to channel A here as you can see there's a really crisp green line through the display there 
Um, it looks like it has actually never been used before. Uh, but that is not possible, it's from 1982-83. So yeah, uh, I've connected my signal generator on uh, channel A and we want to show that. Let's see if we can trigger. Trigger is okay. There we go, okay. So I guess I gotta get used to the analog oscilloscope. We have a really nice uh, sine wave here. So, channel A is working, we can set it to DC or AC and adjust the position up and down like any, any good scope. Let's just try channel B while we're at it. We have to show channel B which is here and we have to trigger on channel B which is here. And uh, the volts per division is here and there's our channel B. So yeah, that's working really nicely. and. Uh, and I got myself a good little analog oscilloscope, 100 megahertz for 50 euro. And uh, who could complain about that? Just a few tips if you want to buy something on eBay that is not working. Basically, what I do is I send mails to the seller asking him the exact symptom of the problem with the equipment. If I can't get an answer or he says, oh, I don't have the power adapter, uh, so I can't test it. If, if someone says that, it basically means that it's not working. But in this case, what the owner said was um, the top is really, really sticky, which is why I was cleaning the metal cover uh, downstairs. Uh, and also he said there's no, um, it's just showing two dots, one on top of each other. And uh, to me that indicates that the horizontal deflection is not working or something uh, like, like that. But uh, since there are two green dots, it also means that the high voltage circuit is working and the power supply is working. So next what I did was I downloaded the schematic and the service manual. In this case it was available uh, online. So looking through that I knew that this oscilloscope was 100% analog and uh, basically uh, all transistor based. What that meant was that um, there won't be any weird ICs or custom ICs that are not available anymore. And everything is just basic uh, transistor circuits. Also it meant that fault finding would be really easy. Because with a discrete transistor circuit, you can get your oscilloscope probe down into the circuit and measuring the different levels. So even before I bought it, I already knew that this would be a fairly easy repair. I already had a price in, in, in mind before I started bidding and uh, luckily there were four or five of these Philips oscilloscopes available for sale at the same time which meant that uh, it was possible that people forgot to bid on this one because there was another one that was more interesting. So yeah, a few tips there on how to bid on eBay and uh, as you can see for 50 euros you can get a really good 100 megahertz oscilloscope. So that's it really, not much to repair this time, uh, but uh, anyway, I have more equipment that I will be repairing and uh, also I'll be designing different circuits in the future. So do subscribe to my channel and um, see you again soon.